Welcome to this presentation about the news in IBM Spaces Statistics 21, and this is recording part one of two. And my name is Camilla Redander, working as a client technical professional at IBM SPS. This is the agenda for today. This is the first recording part one. Then I'm going to talk about the themes of the release. There is four. And then new features in IBM SPS Statistics and in recording, recording part two, then I'm going to do a demonstration. So starting with the four themes of IBM SPS Statistics 21. First, we have the running Monte Carlo simulation, and that's a way to build better models and assess risk when inputs are uncertain. Then we have the compatibility, the ability for SPS to play well with others through integration with technologies and tools. And then we have the enhanced client server technology, enhancement to client server technology to improve performance and give organization more flexibility when dealing with large scales of data. And the fourth area is to improve pr productivity. And that's improvements to existing technology that allows users to increase production through software enhancement. So these are the four areas. I'm going to start with the first one, the simulation part. And uh, we're talking about predictive analytics, and maybe you are already doing that, like doing regression analysis. That's some kind of predictive analytics. The Monte Carlo simulation is a method that has been added to the base module. It's a form of predictive analysis that can be used when you don't have enough data. It simulates data from own specified parameters and use that as an input to predict something important for you, like a target variable, like example, sales. So the parameters for sales could be number of sales agents, type of marketing activity, and number of sales calls, for example. Then you can tweak these parameters to simulate the data and compare outcomes Example, simulate the number of sales agents and see how this affects the sales number. And uh, this is also something called to create what-if scenarios when you tweak your data. What they call a simulation in a specific statistics is unique in that it combines the power of predictive analytics with the what-if capabilities of Monte Carlo simulation. Other simulation packages in the market make you start from the very beginning and force you to specify everything in the model. And this includes the distribution of the inputs to the model, correlation among the inputs, and strength of the inputs. Unlike other packages, simulation in statistics lets you use existing predictive models and existing data as the starting points for your simulation. And then, then this makes it much easier for you the predictive models can then be built in a specific statistics or a specific modeler, and that can be used to specify the strengths of the inputs and the distribution, because a specific statistics can use this existing similar data that you have to fit automatically the distribution of the inputs and the correction of the inputs in your new data. So an example, practical example of this, if you pretend that you are opening a new store and you want to predict the first quarter sales from this store, you know some predictors of success from before. Number of reps is important, and adv advertising the budget, and current economy, and performance, etc. You don't have any data on this new store, but you have data from other existing stores, and then you can build models from these existing stores with statistics or modeler. And then you can use that model as a starting point for simulation. And if you compare this to other packages, then you have to write your own algebra equation. And you also have to know the distribution of inputs and which variables are best predictors of distribution, like normal distribution or not normal. So it's much more easy to use statistics because then you have the, the data from the model from other existing stores, and then we can predict for the new stores. So 
and in the end, you get some predictions of the new of the quarter sales for the new stores. Then, if we leave the simulation, we come to the compatibility. You can now access data from Cognos to do more statistical function than it's possible to do today within Cognos. You can use Cognos for powerful professional reporting, though you cannot, you cannot read back the data from SPSS statistics to Cognos, but Cognos can read Excel files, so that might be useful. There are a lot of programmers among SPSS users, and there is also some web places where you can share your programming, among others, on the web. You use the Developer Central for that. You have earlier heard about the integration between SPSS statistics and the program language R or Python. No, we can also have the opportunity to use Java within SPSS statistics syntax language. You can also create dialog boxes, and that's not a new function. The results can be written into different format. You can also call for SPSS language from a Java application and do statistic analysis in this Java application. If you are used to export your results to Excel, you will discover the higher capacity. You can put in more data into Excel newer version. As before, you can decide that the results should be in a specific cell in Excel. If you work a lot to control and clean your data, you will now get even more help to do this work simple and smoothly. In a new command, you can get some help to find specific individuals that is similar to each other in all answer or variable values, but they have different ID or names. You can have some help to discover these IDs. Or you can also use this new function to check if the value labels or other metadata from two data files and get information about which differences you have if you compare these two data files. And this is extra important if you are working with follow-ups and have similar files but from different time points. You can also see if values are different in two files when they should be similar. That could be helped if you are working with validation of data. All the mismatch information will also be saved into the data file as new variables. There is also some safety, like uh, having a password in data files. You can merge files more easily and safely. There are pivot tables in some of the advanced analysis, and pivot is the same as change row, column, and layer dimensions into a table. You can also right-click one or more columns in the data editor and very fast get some descriptive statistics of the marked variables. And I will make some of this as a demo later in next presentation. Also, this picture that you are going to see is something that I will demo for you in the next recording. And this is function that most people is working very much. And uh, the goal with this news is to get you more effective in your daily work. So starting from the first point here, improve pivot tables. And it doesn't matter if you're working with custom tables or frequencies or descriptive statistics. It's the same. You can sort table rows by category or by values in a column. You can toggle between names and labels, and you can switch the language. You can navigate through a pane for very large tables instead of just scrolling. You get tooltips help on cells. You see an example here on the picture, a yellow box. There are different ways to search in the output. You could preserve column widths when exporting to HTML, and there is ability to completely delete the row label dimension in the table. You can also insert a blank row into a pivot table. And then there are also ability to preserve, keep together, or break here when you're exporting to Word. We also have some news in Amos. That's another module that is standalone. The last version had the news to have a syntax language, and the news today is to the more simple commands in Amos. Now we have the last picture before 
the demo in next presentation. And that's for you who is working with big data, probably working in a server environment. There are server versions of SPSS statistics since over 10 years. And as you see, uh, there are some better performance together with collaboration and deployment services. And there is ease of use with single sign-on between clients server. And there is also some improvements for the Unix, Linux, and also client server can now be on different release levels. You can have the version number 21 on the client and version number 20 on the server. That's okay. So thank you very much for this presentation. And now, if you are interested, you can go to re recording part two and see a demo of the news in SPSS Statistics 21. Thank you very much.